So I want to start with a bit of an icebreaker to give you a laugh because I, I know we will be in for some serious chats today. So I was wondering if I could get someone who might like to share a dream that you had when you were young. So for example, sometimes when I ask this question, I've had people say, I actually wanted to be a Formula One race car driver when I was growing up. And so I'd love if someone, maybe someone on one of the front tables here can just call out something that you wanted to be when you were younger. Filmmaker. Filmmaker, it's pretty awesome. Anyone else? Archaeologist. Oh, I love that. Archaeologist, yep, anyone else? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Helicopter pilot, that's awesome. Um, the reason I ask that is because we have, often when we're children we have lots of dreams for our life and then somewhere along the way, you know, self-doubt creeps in when we get to our teen years and sometimes it's harder to have those big dreams. For me, I certainly had lots of interesting dreams growing up about what I wanted to be. Um, I definitely wanted to be a jockey for a long time, so it's really funny that I'm here today. <laughs> I mean, I'm the perfect type for it, so why not, you know? So they were some of the dreams that I had growing up. I also had another dream though, and it was one that I didn't really share for a long time and wasn't quite sure how, um, how to share with the world. But that dream that I had from a fairly young age was to one day make a difference in the lives of women and girls worldwide. But I wasn't sure how to make that happen. And that's because like many children, I grew up in a home with a perpetrator of domestic violence. In our home, that was my father, and while the abuse was very rarely physical, it was more often emotional, mental, verbal, and financial. But as a kid growing up in the late 1990s and the early 2000s, of course, we didn't have any public conversation about these things. You couldn't scroll through social media and see something about, you know, what coercive control is or about gaslighting and understanding these psychological forms of manipulation and coercion and all of these things. You couldn't turn on TV and see an ad that would share with you about where to get help. And so in our household, we really didn't have any options but to just keep swimming, as I say. Every day really felt like I was treading water and that, that was about the only way I could describe it. What I learned from my father very early on was that um, to be female was to really be inferior. And that's why I'm really passionate about talking about these issues because that's the way that I felt growing up. I was treated differently to my brother and every day felt like walking on eggshells. Now it's impossible to describe in a 20 minute presentation about what that period of time was like, but I will tell you that um, I noticed these changes from about the age of 10 and it wasn't until I was 16 that I called the police for the first time. Unfortunately, when the police arrived, my dad was back to his charming self and actually told police that it was me who should be investigated for abuse. Every day, as I said, you know, it was this battle of treading water, swimming, not feeling I had a purpose and definitely not feeling that there would ever be anything outside of school that could be waiting for me. Um, really, I was just in survival mode and I just wanted to try and get through school. I couldn't even fix my gaze on anything else in the world. And so I had forgotten about those thoughts that I had that I wanted to one day make sure that no other women and children felt the way that I did. Like many young women who grow up in dysfunctional families, I went into the world very emotionally, uh, very emotionally damaged and made a lot of very reckless decisions. Um, put myself in situations that were not healthy, entered relationships that were not healthy. And my wake up call came at age 20 when I was um, assaulted by someone who I had put my trust in for 18 months. I did find that I had to make a decision in that moment. Um, I understood that I could go the way that my dad had gone or I could make a different decision. And so I chose to make a different decision. Everything changed for me when I made a decision to, um, I say quit my job, but really ended up getting fired. Um, <laughs> I was working at a bulk food store and um, I asked for a weekend off to go and volunteer as a photojournalist at a festival. And my boss wasn't very happy about that, so I lost my job. 
But looking back, it was the best decision I could have made because at that festival, I started to learn about issues that were impacting women and girls. And I, I began to learn about things like human trafficking and domestic violence. And I suddenly felt this pull inside of me. And I realized that there was something in me that was yearning to come out. It felt like there was something greater that I was here to do. Um, I actually spent time with investigators who were on the ground rescuing children and, and women out of the sex trade. I got to meet survivors of the sex trade, uh, including a woman that I've been sponsoring for some time. And while I won't really go into the details too much, they are in my book if you want to know more about what I uncovered there. But I will tell you that being in these red light districts, seeing what was happening, seeing the exact buildings where children had been rescued from, and walking into rooms of 13, 14, and 15 year old girls, and knowing that they had already been out of the industry for two to three years, really puts things in perspective for you. There are many issues that drive women and girls, and that includes boys, into the sex industry around the world, and I can tell you it happens here in Australia as well. I know that because I have spent my own time and money investigating some of these issues in Brisbane, particularly in the massage industry, and people would be quite horrified if they knew what was happening. There are many areas where we still need to step up for women and girls. And I just want you to take a moment and look at the faces of some of these women. Each of them have different stories, but each of them have been treated as inferior at some stage in their life simply for being female. Each of them have experienced degradation and missed opportunities and abuse in different forms. And I want you to remember that we are not statistics. You know, we are people. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people walking around in society, and I'm sure in this room today, who have similar experiences to myself. I believe that each of us has a story within us with the power to change lives. But when we raise our voices and when we share those stories within us that we carry, we can carry future generations into the future and create a brighter, more empowered and fairer world for all of us. So thank you very much.